Yari, today we're going to do focus stacking. You understand? Focus stacking, Jerry, and bracketing. G'day, how you going? So I'm going to do some focus stacking and focus bracketing. All you really need is your camera. I'm going to use the Olympus. Most cameras do it these days. Show you the menu. And I'll also try to use the flash as well. You can use the flash to take a flash at each shot. Uh, I'll try and use it in this little eBay uh, mini Lightroom box, whatever. So that'll, that's will win. Jerry. Jerry. Oi. What's the matter? Bloody cat. Uh, so we also need a tripod. Uh, because you want everything to stay stable and not move. Uh, that's the whole idea of stacking. S stack the photos on top of each other. Now, if you start moving around, that's useless. I mean, some software can correct it, uh, but um, you're back. The computer doesn't have to think too hard when they're all per perfectly aligned. Hmm? Where's the gato? Hey, yes, Jerry, gato. <laughs> watch inside the light box turn it on to get nice even fluorescent light there or neon whatever light it is so i've left it in aperture priority now i probably want to move that to because i don't really i can control the light so i can move that to f4 i guess to give you a bit more depth of field but it doesn't really matter because we're focus stacking uh, bracketing and I've put it in auto focus and manual focus. See that one there? I've got peaking on as well. This one here, two second delay because uh, it's going to shake. I mean, it's shaking as it is, just me bloody talking. So there's 2.8, bingo. 3.2, bingo. Let's just go to 4, bongo. 5.6, which I think is a sweet spot on this lens. Bajingo. So what I'm trying to prove there is the depth of field which, by changing the aperture. Let's go to F16, the Django. So what that does, you can see with all these images at different apertures, the depth of field moves. Now, I think people say diffraction and it's not as sharp. So the ideal way is to bracket. Now, if you don't have focus stacking, bracketing in your camera, you can still do it. I'm going to focus here. And then I'll focus there. Take a shot. And then I'll focus there. Take a shot. You see what I mean? You're slivering. And you're just um, increasing the plane of focus. So you can do that, take all the shots, put them all in post and, and stack them all together that way. But the cameras these days, um, they've got the computers that can do all this shit for you. Bracketing, on, focus bracketing, on, focus stacking, on. Focus bracketing takes 10 shots, for example, and, and that's it. Focus stacking will do those 10 shots as well but it'll uh, merge them all together at the end and give you the final result. So you, you want to do that one. Multiple shots are taken with the focus point moving slightly forward and backward from the initial point. Images then are stacked. A shot there, you'll take a shot one step back and then you'll take all the shots in, in front. Number of set shots, uh, I'm going to take 15 shots from the, from the bottom, from the bottom to the top, 15 shots. Set focus differential, what that means is how, how much space there is between each shot. So for instance, I've done 15 shots and then each shot will be spaced according to this. Really narrow until it moves and then it moves on to the next shot and then the next shot and then the next shot. So this is the space in between each shot. Yeah, so what you can do is you can experiment. And then this is for the flash, which I'll show you later. So I focused right down to the second from the bottom and two second delay. And there you see that. You can actually see it on the screen. Now it's busy thinking, um, it's churning away the computer. 
what it was focusing all the white there it just went boom 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 and you saw it all focusing in front of you all right now that that's done let's take it into the computer and see what the hell it did jerry you gonna help all right so this is the stack of 15 images i mean om workspace you can use anything you want uh, but om workspace works well with olympus and there's actually a tool in here called focus stacking so even better so as you can see this photo here if you look over it in order you'll see it's focused there that's the first shot the next shot next shot next shot and as you can see it's focusing all the way up from the bottom to the top if you get a bit lost and you don't know what shot starts and where's the end It'll tell you down here that it's the bracketed shot, the first one, the second frame, the third frame, all the way to the 15th frame. And then what happens after the 15th shot, you'll get the final image. Now this image is a JPEG only. It's not actually a raw file. The final product is a JPEG. With the final image, you can either manipulate that or if you want, which a lot of people do, is they want to manipulate the raw file and then stack them all together at the end. That way you'll get a, a better shot. So if you get this image here and do whatever you want to do with it, the exposure, you know, whatever the normal editing thing that you do, whatever you want, you know, put some vignetting if you want. Right click on that first one that you did, copy edit settings and select all of them, except for the JPEG at the end, obviously. Paste edit settings. So whatever you did to that one happens to that one it happens to all of them i want to stack those to get the final image the focus the final focus stacking it's the final countdown do 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 so you got to select all of them tools composite focus stacking and then press composite the computer does its thinking and that is focus stacking and there it is from the bottom to the top it's completely in focus uh... flash on there flash there i've got the little soft box there I've got my watch there put a black backdrop that's what it looks like with just a normal flash i've tried to reduce the reflections as much as i could it kind of looks pretty good but the back is out of focus you can tell so let's focus stack that with flash charge time wait how many seconds before each shot uh, your flash needs to recharge before it's ready to take the next shot I don't know these modern flashes they're pretty fast let's give it uh, one second I'm in TTL by the way just TTL I put the focus down the bottom Well, that was shit that didn't turn out okay so what's happened is the cam the the object the watch isn't that flat it's a little bit up so i don't really need 15 shots so what it what it did it took 15 bloody shots but half those shots at the end were all out of focus because it's trying to do a focus of all the way we only needed about five shots to get the whole thing in focus all right, so I'm going to do four shots, and the differential is around four. So I'm going to make it more narrow. Charge time, one second. Focus down the bottom. Boom, 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 boom. Bada bing, bada boom. The first time I did it, the, the hand... Where are you? The first time the second hand was moving and because I set the flash to one second you can see four frozen second hands in the in the photo actually that's a pretty good effect <laughs> uh, but then when I did it the second time just then I did five shots the uh, for some reason my bloody watch stopped oh shit what my watch stop <laughs> I'm gonna have to get that fixed uh, I haven't wound it up. This is an old classic Seiko Lord Matic 1969. Uh, 
cost me about 500 bucks. I think they're going for about two grand now. This was years ago. I bought it about six, seven years ago for only 500 bucks. Yeah, but watches are really getting expensive now. And I think this one I've seen go for about two grand. Anyway, this one's automatic, but you still got to wind it up at the start of the day. Anyway, I don't know why I'm talking about watches. So that worked, and that gave you a nice, and that gave you a nice even stack with the flash. Boom, 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 boom. Now, uh, in the old days, you might be wondering how the hell did people do this when there were before the days of computers, you know, and automation and whatever. And it was with tilt shift lenses. And there's a really good video I just watched, um, and I, and it really explains it well how tilt shift ch um, changes the. I can't remember the name. I'll, I'll put it in link photography online, and it explains how changing the shifting the tilt of the lens. They call them tilt shift lenses. Um, you have to buy them. Jerry. Uh, they're special lenses and you they're mainly for landscape I think and it makes the depth of field sliver <laughs> your your radar of depth of field goes like that as the aperture grows or as the aperture gets smaller but with these tilt shifts it somehow does it like that um, and it increases everything from the near to the far in focus tilt shift lenses <laughs> I'll probably buy one one day uh, just to give it a go but for this everything's become much easier now um, in the modern technology age um, but the downfall is you need a computer and you've got to stack it all together or you need one of the latest cameras with those tilt shifts it's it's in camera um, you're manipulating the depth of field in camera so you don't need to stack or uh, or anything like that Joe what are you doing you're catching some sun you're not gonna help me with my focus stacking hey you got the little tippy tail going Jerry what do you want to help? Huh? You're relaxing. 